hot did it get today, or is it getting? We turn to meteorologist Jeff Muniz in the Weather Center with the latest on that. No, it wasn't any record-breaking heat around here, but it sure felt like it. That's all you had to say. Temperatures again soaring into the mid-90s. Let's take a look at our current temperatures. 94 in Peoria, 95 in the Twin Cities, 95 as you head down to Beerstown, 96 in Lincoln. With the heat index, though, when you factor in the humidity, most locations in the triple digits again this afternoon. Heat index readings up to 105 in some locations this afternoon. That's why we're under a heat advisory. We have at least one more day of this severe heat. That heat advisory lasts until 7 o'clock on Wednesday. Will we get any relief? I'll let you know in a few minutes in my full forecast. Gina? Jeff, thanks. If you need a place to keep cool, area communities are offering residents some relief from the heat. In Peoria, the Department of Human Services office on Northeast Adams is open from 8.30 in the morning until 5 in the evening. Bloomington's DHS office is also open tomorrow, same time. That's located at 501 West Washington Street. And in Pekin, you can cool off at City Hall on Capitol Street or at the City Service Center on Cook Street. Both are open from 8 a.m. to 8 p.m. State budget cuts are creating a lot of heat among parents, daycare providers, and workers. Thousands of them are in Springfield today, hoping to put pressure on state lawmakers to restore funding to cover child care subsidies. Here's 25's Denise Jackson now in the newsroom with more from one local family-owned daycare provider who fears the worst if budget changes are not made. And uh, we will try to get to there's Denise Jackson. Denise? Well, Mike, uh, Rohe's Learning Center has 18 locations throughout central Illinois and Chicago. And this morning, more than 30 Rohe's employees joined co-owner Wendy Pettit for the trip to the state capitol. Armed with signs, banners, and pictures, they're hoping to get their message to legislators about restoring money to the Child Care Connection Program. Pettit says if the money is not restored, she'll be forced to close some of her centers. I can't imagine if our centers closed. We're a big part of Peoria. So, and for the children. I just can't, I can't envision it. We had children in our graduating class knowing their letters and sounds this year. And, um, you know, that's what they say they want us to do because um, in their homes sometimes they don't hear the same sound as what that letter says. And then they have trouble reading. Pettit says she will have to lay off half of her 1,000 daycare employees if the cuts are not restored. She says she's working, working moms will be forced to stay home because they won't be able to afford daycare costs. On News 25 at 6, we'll hear from one mother who also went to the rally in Springfield. Live in the newsroom, I'm Denise Jackson. Now back to you, Mike. All right, Denise, thanks for that update. Well, thousands of people poured into the state capitol protesting the possible budget cuts and instead demanding higher taxes. They waved signs in support of programs for children, women, senior citizens, disabled people, and more. Authorities say today's rally attracted more than 5,000 people. At one point, police stopped letting more people into the capitol because of safety concerns. Governor Pat Quinn told the crowd to keep up pressure on Illinois lawmakers to pass a budget that does not leave out the sick and the needy. Illinois has a massive budget deficit, so the governor called the legislature into special session to close the gap. Governor Quinn says the state will have to cut billions of dollars out of programs that provide community services if lawmakers don't pass a temporary in income tax increase. But Republicans like gubernatorial candidate and state senator Bill Brady of Bloomington say raising taxes is not the answer. At a news conference this afternoon, Senate President John Cullerton said Senate Democrats already approved a fully funded budget. He said Republicans must now follow and sign off on the income tax increase. So we need the Senate Republicans, now that it's June, and members of the House to find the courage that we showed and is needed to make similar tough choices that, that will preserve the vital services in our state. To get Republican support, Governor Quinn says he's open to revising the size of the tax hike on business. President Obama today toughened his condemnation of the crackdown in Iran, saying the world is outraged. It is his strongest language yet about the turmoil following the disputed Iranian presidential election. The United States and the international community have been appalled and outraged by the threats, the beatings, and imprisonments of the last few days. I strongly condemn these unjust actions. And on Mahmoud Ahmadinejad's disputed re-election, there is significant questions about uh, the legitimacy of the election. 
heartbreaking is what he called that video of the young Iranian woman dying on a Tehran street. Mr. Obama also fired back at Republicans who are calling his statements on Iran too timid, but Republicans seem to take credit for his change in tone. Uh, I think uh, the president did step up his uh, criticism of the Iranian regime. Uh, I congratulate him for that. Uh, Still, Mr. Obama is making it clear again that the U.S. and CIA are not directing the demonstrations. He was best known for being a sidekick, but that never seemed to bother Ed McMahon. The television legend died at a Los Angeles hospital overnight. McMahon once likened his role on Johnny Carson's Tonight Show as being a pitcher's favorite catcher. Buddies, even though we weren't joined at the hip, we were buddies. We've known each other 34 years. We have dinner together. We're good friends. You cannot fake that on television. In the late 1980s, McMahon hosted Star Search, the precursor to all the TV talent shows we see now. His publicist didn't give a cause of death, but says the 86-year-old had a multitude of health problems the last few months. There is an employee shakeup at Peoria's Proctor Hospital. The board of directors is making changes from the top down, ushering out employees like the chief operating officer and six others. A hospital spokesman says the terminations are not due to the economic downturn. Brother Steve Wilson says it's all part of a new strategic plan at the hospital. Besides the chief operating officer, others now looking for work include two executives and four department heads. They rocked and rolled up their sleeves to save lives at the Peoria Civic Center today. It's the third year these Peoria High School students have partnered with a local radio station to host a blood drive. If you didn't get a chance to give the gift of life today, WEEK and its sister stations, WAO.